Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this new class, Lifestyle Evangelism. So before we go ahead, let me just uh, uh, introduce myself. My name is Paul, and I'll be, I'm in APC Mangalore. Uh, and I'll be going through the subject, Lifestyle Evangelism. And uh, uh, throughout the subject, it's, it's, this subject is more of a practical subject, right? Uh, but it's also important to learn theory. Uh, so we will do theory, but since we are online, we'll also do uh, a few practical sessions um, uh, where we'll see how to share the gospel uh, with people around us. So let's start with an introduction, right? Uh, now, uh, you, we have the notes also available. The PDF has been uploaded, so you can go ahead and download it. And even as we uh, carry along in this class, you can just uh, you know, track along as we uh, continue with classes. So lifestyle evangelism. Uh, evangelism is something that all of us uh, are called to do, right? Uh, uh, all of us, the Lord Jesus himself said, uh, go and make disciples, right? Uh, in, in Matthew chapter 28, uh, he said, go and make disciples, right? So the whole commission was to evangelize, right? So this study will help us first to learn about how to evangelize, learn about, uh, you know, uh, uh, giving the good, uh, right defense for the gospel. And two, we will also study on how to carry out evangelism in the right way. Right, uh, because uh, right now, when we look around, there are people, you know, evangelizing in the wrong way. So we want to learn the right way. We want to learn the way that Christ taught us uh, through the scriptures. So uh, we'll get into the first topic. Right, it is on page four. If you're following along, uh, it's about sharing Jesus. Right. Uh, let's look at the necessity and urgency. Of sharing Jesus. Now, uh, I'll keep, uh, you know, teaching in between. If you have any questions, you can always put it on the chat, or you can unmute and ask questions, and we can uh, uh, answer them as well, right? So, as I said, Matthew eight twenty eight, Jesus has resurrected, and he meets his disciples, and he tells them very important. He tells them twenty eight eighteen to twenty. He said, "Go and make disciples out of people." So we are all called to witness about Jesus Christ, right? Uh, none of us can say, okay, I'm a pastor, so I don't uh, let leave that job to the evangelist. Or none of us can say, I'm a teacher. Let, let me just give me a classroom. I'll teach. I'm good at that. None of us can say, I'm a worship leader, so uh, I can just lead worship. Give me a guitar or a keyboard. And no, we are all called to evangelize. We are all called to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing. We all have different areas of gifts, different areas of service. We all have different abilities and capabilities, right? Uh, but we all are to witness to Jesus Christ in whatever capacity that we can, right? Uh, so this is a truth that we should be established in. You cannot say, okay, uh, you know, I'm working in the IT company, so I I will leave the job of evangelization to the pastors and the prophets and all of that. No, all of us, all of us, right? Uh, we may be students in colleges. Uh, we may be homemakers, right? We are called to evangelize, right? Uh, so that is set in place. So we know that we are called to evangelize. Let's look at the necessity, right? So why should we witness? And, uh, we saw that in Matthew 28, Jesus himself told the disciples, go and witness. But let's look at a few points as to why we should witness about Jesus Christ, right? Uh, first one, every person needs a savior, right? Every person, whether they are rich, whether they are poor, whether they are... Uh, uh, they have good knowledge, whether they have no education, every person needs a savior. You know, there's this book where it writes that uh, every 
human being in this world has a god shaped vacuum in their heart which means what can have all the money in the world all the riches of the world you can have everything that our hearts desire but there is a god shaped vacuum in each of our heart that only god can fill right the bible teaches us that we are sinners let's read romans chapter 3 and verse 23 can one of us please read that romans 3 and 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in jesus christ whom god displayed publicly as a propitiation of his blood through faith yeah thank you john uh, so we are all sinners right uh, we are all sinners uh, whether they're born as a in a in a palace or whether they're born anywhere else we are all sinners right and so we need a savior right uh, when we when we look at uh, the things that's happening in this world uh, people are looking for different means of you know comfort um, i remember uh, just speaking to a, a good friend of mine a couple of months back and he was saying i've taken up yoga and i said okay uh, i said why cuz uh, i want peace of mind Uh, so there's so much right people he knows about jesus he knows uh, but you know it's it, it's that emptiness inside which needs to be filled up so everyone all of us are sinners so we need a savior two our sins separate us from god right uh, firstly we need a savior our sins separate us from god three uh, satan brings bondage into our lives so that is why we need a savior right and when there is bondage there is eternal separation from god and uh god showed his love for us uh, that he sent his son jesus to die on the cross and he bore all our sins now this may sound uh, you know oh pastor i already know this this is the basics of uh, in our know, christianity but here's the thing you know uh, as we keep going on we'll read about uh, the two minute gospel and the four minute gospel uh, and the and the bible says that the the gospel is the power of god unto salvation right it's a simple gospel there's no there's no big things that you need to discuss you don't need to know from genesis to the revelations to share the gospel it's a power of god it's just a simple gospel which you and i can uh, share uh, finally salvation is a complete gift that god is giving us and and that gift helps us to be free from sickness and diseases and satan and all all the things of the enemy so every person needs a savior right sometimes we feel uh, it's happened to me right uh, once i uh, you know became a believer i always wanted to share the gospel with people but i would see these rich people you know uh they they've got everything in life so i wonder okay he's got everything so just let's look at let's go to the slums and uh, do some street ministry or something uh but then after some time i realized that it's not so uh, money does not fulfill uh, uh you know the desires of our heart no uh so uh, i'm reminded of this example um, i read a book uh, i'm sure most of us may know pete sampras he was a great tennis player wimbledon champion seven time wimbledon champion um now as a as a young boy all he wanted to do was win the wimbledon right that's all his goal was as a young boy he he didn't want anything else in life right uh, his his mother used to tell him he wouldn't go for you know mother used to say that he wouldn't go for birthday parties he wouldn't go anywhere he would just get up in the morning go for his practice come back eat healthy no junk food he dedicated his whole life towards tennis finally he got into the wimbledon he won his first wimbledon trophy and uh, he writes uh, he writes this, he goes back home he puts it on his shelf that uh, day or the next day and he looks at that 
trophy and he felt so empty that he wanted to commit suicide all his life for that one you know wimbledon championship he looks at it after he won it and he said i i, I felt empty and he wanted to commit suicide so every person in this world needs a savior let's go to point 2 there's only one savior right uh and that is jesus christ our lord acts chapter 4 and verse 12 can one of us please read that acts chapter 4 and verse 12 Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Thank you Jafina. Oh uh, let's also read 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen. For there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Right. So, firstly, we establish the fact that every person needs a savior. Two, there's only one savior. That is Jesus Christ. Right. Now, picture it this way. Imagine that somebody is dying of a deadly disease or a deadly sickness, uh, and you know that there's one person. who can you know save uh, you know for example a friend of yours is is in the hospital suffering from a deadly disease but you know that there's one person who can save him wouldn't you go and you know tell that person hey you know what there's uh, there's there's a way for you out of this there's a way for you to get healed i'm sure all of us would do that right uh, even at as 2020 uh started with covid and uh the pandemic and all across uh, we saw that lives were just being lost and it was such a miserable time but on the other side we also saw some wonderful wonderful testimonies of god's healing power right where people called upon the name of the lord and jesus himself brought restoration uh and so while people are empty while people are searching and while they are looking out for hope you and i can bring this gospel of jesus christ to them right now later on we look at uh, you know it's not like when we you know share the gospel everyone are going to say oh what a wonderful news let me accept this no uh there's going to be persecution there's going to be people who will you know uh, uh turn away from the gospel and all of that uh but this is the truth right where uh you know uh, we can share this that there is only one savior the lord jesus christ right um proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 let's read that there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death yeah thank you brother so here we see that when we look around us there are the rich there are the wealthy there are the successful but all of them are searching for purpose for meaning and for direction and this spiritual search uh, can only be attained uh, you know can be achieved through our lord jesus christ right so uh, we all have a testimony right I, i'm sure all of us have some kind of a testimony none of us can say oh no i don't have a testimony no we all have a testimony so we all can share uh, you know what the lord jesus did for each one of us uh, let's go to point 3 right uh, again point 3 is god has commissioned us to share the gospel of jesus christ now it is not that you know jesus died on the cross and he rose up to heaven and he said okay uh if you want to you can you know share the gospel no the lord jesus has commissioned us right so he's given us the authority he's given us the power and he's saying go i have given you the authority go and make disciples 
right? Go and make the sacrifice. I, I'm giving you the authority, right? It's like this. Imagine, uh, you, you know, you're in, a, in your workplace and the CEO of your company says, you know what, I want you to go and um, start a new branch in this other city. Uh, will you have any hesitations? You won't, right? Uh, you won't feel, okay, uh, should I do this? What will they think? No. Say, hey, a CEO has told me, go and start this branch here. Yeah, so I'm going to go. You'll go with full authority. And if people come to stop you, you'll say, no, I've got permissions. Uh, the CEO has given me the authority. So here's the authority. And so I'm doing what he has told me to do. The same way, Jesus has commissioned and given you and me the authority, right? Now, when he's given you and me the authority, it does not, uh, you know, it does not mean that, uh, you know, we don't prepare ourselves. Uh, you know, we have to prepare ourselves. Uh, uh, and, and so he's, he's given us the authority. He says, okay, go make disciples. And we have to prepare ourselves for it, right? Uh, so Jesus also mentions many places in the scriptures. He says it's not going to be easy. You've got to carry your cross. There's going to be difficulties. But through it all, my grace will be with you. Right? So, so he, after the resurrection, when we read uh, Matthew chapter 20, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 24, uh, we won't read that whole passage. But uh, uh, in, in this uh, passage, he, Luke 24, he, he resurrected from the dead. And then the Lord Jesus goes, he meets his disciples um, and, and he tells them what is going to happen. And here's something interesting he does. He tells his disciples, look, I'm alive, first thing. Secondly, you remember the Old Testament, all that you read about the Old Testament? You see how I have fulfilled it, that the Messiah is going to be born. He will die. He will uh, rise again and he will be the king of all kings. You see how I have, uh, you know, fulfilled all those pro prophecies. So he shares all this with his disciples. Now, if we look at the Old Testament and see the messianic scriptures being fulfilled, it is, it is to the point, to the date, right? You know, God is a perfect God. He's on time. He's never too late. Uh, I'm reminded of this. And um, he says, uh, uh, you know, uh, would you, uh, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, out of you the seed will come. Right? Written thousands of years before. Right? Uh, thousands, thousands of years before. Now, when we look at it, it's, it's so wonderful that those prophecies are fulfilled to the point, right? Isaiah writes about the cross, right? He writes the whole encounter, you know, by his stripes, we are healed. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement was upon him, right? So Jesus, he, he tells his disciples, look, I died, I rose again. Look, I fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies and now so that you believe go and make disciples have you ever wondered uh, you know i always remember uh, you know i always think of this peter and all the disciples let's take peter for example he was so afraid he said okay uh, he was not even at the cross when jesus was dying and he said okay uh, you know he denied jesus and he went away uh, he didn't want to do the ministry but after the Lord Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the same Peter, right, who was fearful, who was afraid, who said, okay, I don't want to, uh, you know, do this. The same Peter was standing in Jerusalem preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? What happened? What happened? The reality sunk in, the anointing, uh, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit came upon him and so if you and i are to be people who will evangelize reach out to the gospel we cannot do it on our own flesh we can but if we do it in our own flesh it we may not see the fruit that we want to see right he told his disciples you are to be a witness 
And he did something. He empowered them by the Holy Spirit. Right? The same commission has been passed to you and me. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? It could be just sharing the gospel with your friend. Say, hey, I know this, my friend, for 10 years, but uh, may, not have an, may, may not have got an opportunity to share the gospel with him. Yet, you still need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, let's read. Uh, let's read Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. Uh, it's the same verse that I mentioned, but I think we should read that. So we'll get a clearer understanding. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. So here we see that uh, God is giving that commission, right? The Lord Jesus is giving that commission. Now, here's an important thing. He says, go and be witnesses. You know, the original Greek for witness is martyr, right? Uh, the original Greek for the word witness is martyr. So basically, Jesus is saying, be ready to be a martyr for Jesus Christ, right? Now, don't be afraid, right? Uh, what I'm only saying is, God has given us that power, that anointing of the Holy Spirit to be willing to even be a martyr for the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, so you and I should know how to tell the truth to people. So as we go along uh, you know, each week, we will look at different ways to share the gospel, right? Uh, different ways to share the gospel. Uh, remember this, good news is not good news until it reaches somebody, right? Good news is not good news until it reaches uh, the people who need to hear it, right? Uh, uh, people will not know the truth until somebody tells them the truth, right? Uh, you know, there's been plenty of examples where, you know, as, as a ministry and as a uh, as a team, we have uh, shared the gospel with many places. I can give you maybe one example here in the city of Mangalore where, uh, you know, uh, we were going out. Uh, we used to go on the streets and evangelize, uh, you know, giving out tracts. And uh, uh, there was this one person uh, who came up to me and he said, uh, I don't want you to share the gospel with anyone. Uh, so I said, why not? He said, no, because it's not the truth. You people are making money, you know, whatever reasons that he had. Uh, uh, but I was going to, I was almost walking away, but the Holy Spirit reminded me one thing. He said, I have commissioned you, right? Uh, I've commissioned you. So, so I said, no, I'm going to share the gospel. And if you want to hear it, uh, it'll be great if you can give me five minutes. And he said, okay, tell me about your foreign Jesus or something he said. And I was like, okay. Uh, I prayed. I said, God, please help me. And I began to share the gospel with him. Nothing, you know, very supernatural, nothing. I, I just said, see, we all are born sinners. And sin has its consequences. But here's what Jesus did. Jesus came, God the Father, uh, God came as a human being into this world as a, as a man and he lived a perfect life, right? And he died on the cross for our sins. He resurrected again uh, and one day we will be with him. As I was saying these things, I was thinking to myself, I don't think this guy is going to, you know, listen to me. Or I don't think uh, he's even going to, you know, somewhere in my heart, but I said, no power of God is in the scripture. And as I finished, to my surprise, he was crying on the street. He was crying. He said, uh, he said, I've never heard a message like this before. I just thought, you know, Jesus was somebody like who lived in some place. He never knew the truth about Jesus. So the point I'm trying to bring is people will not know the truth unless we tell them, 
right? People have a wrong understanding about who Jesus is, right? And so it's important that we share the truth. So now this person is in the church, actively serving, uh, and his whole family is come to Christ now. So, so it was just a simple message, a simple message of who Jesus was and who Jesus is and what he can do in our lives. Right? And as we go on from classes, we will also learn the different ways of sharing the gospels. We'll, we'll also do a few role plays later on. Uh, so that can help us as well. So let's read Romans 10, 8 to 15, a big chapter. But let's read that Romans 10, 8 to 15. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Is it Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 15, or Romans chapter 8? Uh, you're on mute, Pastor. Sorry, uh, it's Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 15. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Romans 10, 8 to 15. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But if it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved, as the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one that they not one they have not believed in and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard and how can they hear without someone preaching to them and how can they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news amen thank you uh, so let me just pick up two points from this entire portion of scripture one is in verse 9 where it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, right, you will be saved. Right? Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you will be saved. Now, the second point, right, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Meaning whoever believes in him, God will receive and the Lord will save them. Right now, these two points are very important. One, confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. And whoever, right, the word is whoever. So anybody in this world, it doesn't matter who, if they confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in their heart, they can be saved. Right. So the reason we are doing this is to help us to you know put a good foundation right it's like if you're building a a, a five-story building you got to go deep down the foundation has to go really down right so even as you and i learn about evangelization our roots or our foundations need to be strong right uh, because there will be people who will question us there will be people who will question the authority of the scriptures Right, and uh, we cannot be tossed about. Right, we need to be strong in the word. We can say, okay, this is what the word says, and so this is what I'm going to believe in. 
uh, that's one. And two, we should understand our authority. What is our authority uh, that we we are standing on, right? We're standing on the authority of Jesus Christ. You know, today in this world, this kind of, we see a lot of news around, right? Very skeptical news. Uh, some of it is fake news. Some of them are real news. A lot of them are exaggerations, right? Uh, uh, now, here's the thing. This news that you are sharing is a is the not not a news that is you know that comes on TV, but this news is the news that has been sent from God the Father. It is powerful. It is it is able to change people's lives. You know, a lot of lot of people have said you know uh, uh, Jesus is a good man. I don't think you know. Gnostics say that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus probably didn't die on the cross. Or uh, there are many writers who wrote that Jesus uh, was not on the cross. He sent uh, his, uh, you know, avatar on the cross. So there are a lot of, uh, and I've encountered all these, uh, you know, people who are skeptical, skeptical about the truth. But here's the thing. They should not deter us from bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ. It should never. I'll just share this and uh, testimony of this. I'm sharing these testimonies so that all of us can be encouraged, right? Uh, uh, now, I'm not sharing. Uh, there are times when I have also, uh, you know, tried my best to share, but it hasn't gone through. Uh, but there are times when the God has really ministered to people. And so there's this one time, this young boy, probably about 22, 23 years old, uh, he is an atheist, and uh, he said, I don't believe in God. I don't want God. Uh, how can God be true? Uh, how can God, you know, how can it be that, you know, God, uh, you know, through a woman, and then suddenly one baby comes, that baby is Jesus, you know, uh, and he started being very practical. He said, how can it be? Uh, 30 years old. Uh, he started some ministry, 33 years old, he died. And now that he's died, he's dead. And now you all are, you know, praying and his blood will cleanse you. Where is his blood? You know, very practical kind of thing. And these are genuine things that people will question, that people will ask. Uh, and so I began to share the gospel. I began to tell him about what the message of what, did Je what Jesus did in our lives. Uh, he was just not uh, interested. But the, one day I was praying. And as I was praying, I, uh, uh, I was praying for him. And I said, God, I think I should uh, you know, just move on, maybe share with somebody else. But the Holy Spirit reminded me, saying, he's still coming to you. That means there's some emptiness in him. He still wants to hear from you. I said, yeah, he's still coming. If he, did, he was not interested, he wouldn't have come. So he used to come every week. I began to share. I, I told him, see, this is what Jesus did. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it took over more than six months. And after six months, uh, he said, I think I should accept Jesus as my personal savior. Six months right, of sharing the gospel and, you know, trying to uh, teach him and trying to make him understand. Right? And there are times when in two, three days, people have accepted Jesus. There are times people have accepted on that, on the spot. Uh, so there will be many things that may happen, right? Uh, people may accept, people may not accept, uh, but that does not stop us from bringing the gospel to people, right? Why? Because the gospel is the power of God. It's not the power of men. It's not the power of the government. It's not the power of our nation. It is not the power of ourselves. It is the power of God unto salvation, right? So you picture it, right? Uh, all of you, just as you're sitting there, picture it. God has commissioned you with this word, and he's saying it is a power of God, right? He's, he's given them the power, right? and he's saying, go and make disciples, right? Now, along the way, right, we need to be wise, we need to prepare ourselves, we need to have a good spiritual life, we need to, uh, you know, do all the spiritual uh, responsibilities that we have to do. Uh, but remember, the gospel 
is the power of God. Right? It's the power of God. You don't have to, you know, uh, give a big supernatural experience. That is good. It's good. But you can only just give two minutes of a message uh, of, of the gospel and people's lives can be touched. Right? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, Radhana has raised her hand. Go ahead. Uh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Aradna. You're, sorry, uh, you're, you were on mute. Can you repeat that, please? Okay, by mistake. All right, it's fine. Okay, uh, any questions? Anything that you want to share? Uh, or we can just move on. Okay, let's move on. Now, we all have understood this, right? We've understood that the gospel is the power of God. We have to. God has commissioned us. Don't wait to become a pastor. Don't wait to become a prophet. Right? You can start. You can start today. You can start after this call. Right? Uh, because God has given us the authority. He has commissioned us. Right? Of course, there'll be inhibitions. We will learn about all that fear, doubt, all that we will learn about. But this is the foundation, right? This is the foundation that we stand on. And the foundation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is, it is really powerful. Amen. So let's look at the urgency. Why this sense of urgency, right? Why is it that, well, why can't we wait? You can wait till I'm, uh, let me wait till I'm 35 and I will start my ministry or let me wait till, you know, uh, my children grow up and then I can go and, you know, uh, minister and evangelize and do all that. No. Why this urgency? Why is it that we are saying, hey, we all have to go into it immediately now? Let's look at a few points. First one, there is no second chance, right? There's no second chance. Um, maybe some of us may meet some people and then you may not meet them again, right? Uh, I remember this one time, uh, I was traveling from Bangalore to Mangalore in a train and uh, I had some work here. So, so in the train, it was a night journey, so it's 7 p.m. to early morning, about 6 a.m. Uh, we reach here. And uh, so I just had dinner, everything, ready to just get some rest, go to sleep. Immediately, the Holy Spirit, you know, put something in my heart to go and share the gospel with this uh, man. And when I saw this man, uh, I knew he's not uh, a believer. So we could, just by looking, we could know that he's not a believer. Um, so I said, God, it's late. Let's sleep. Let's look after this tomorrow. Uh, so we went to sleep. Uh, I didn't get sleep, obviously. Woke, at about, woke up at about one o'clock. This man is still sitting and looking out of the window. He's not, he's not sleeping. Then I knew he's waiting for me. So I got off and I began to sit and talk to him. And after speaking to him for about half an hour, uh, you know, it was broken Hindi that I could speak. I spoke in broken Hindi and uh, I don't know what he understood. Uh, but he was saying, uh, you know, pray for me. Pray for me. Uh, he was coming to Mangalore to look out for a job. He had gone through many difficulties. He lost his wife through cancer. And uh, he was just lost. His eyes showed everything. Uh, and I, I, I shared the gospel with him. And I remember the, the Lord just ministered to him so powerfully. Uh, he said he slept. He we prayed. He he said the salvation prayer, and I we went back to sleep. Morning he woke up, and he said, "I will never forget this journey for the rest of my life." Why? Because if I hadn't meet, met you, I don't know what would have happened. Now there is joy. There is peace in my heart. Right. Uh, even though I lost my wife, even though 
uh, you know, I'm going through these challenges, financial difficulties, there's peace in my heart. Uh, and, uh, you know, now he's part of our church in Mangalore as well. So uh, he's going back to uh, his state. Uh, he's gone back to his state, actually. He's not here anymore. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, there's no second chances, right? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Could one of us read it, please? Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three and four. Um, but even if a gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Divya. So when someone dies, they're crossing over to eternity either with or without God. There's no middle place, right? There's no place where you, uh, you know, after we die, there's no place where, okay, you stay here for some time. Let me just go check with the Father if you're able to come or no. No, no, no. It's either with or without God. And there's no second chance. And so that's the urgency. There are people around us that are, perishing uh, and so there's an urgency now i'm not saying quit your job be careful remember right i'm not saying quit your job go out on the streets and whole day go no no no. there will come opportunities our way right there will come opportunities there will come times when uh god will very clearly give you opportunities right uh, and we have to step out of our comfort zone. We'll look at that later on, uh, how to overcome in inhibitions. We have to step out. You know, sharing the gospel uh, is an uncomfortable thing for some of us, right? Uh, people may not accept it. People may, oh, what will they think? Or, or uh, you know, why? What if they say, you know, I'm busy? I had all these inhibitions. What if they say, you know, I don't have time. Can you Can you tell me tomorrow? So all these things are there that comes up in our mind. But remember, there is an urgency, right? There's no second chance. Second point, time is running out. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. Could we read that, please? Matthew 24 and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Yes, thank you. Uh, so God's, God's clock is ticking. Right? Uh, now, I'm not making everyone scared, saying, what is this eschatology? We're studying end times now. It's true. It's a fact that we all have to uh, you know, digest. It's, it's true that... We are coming towards the end of time, uh, and even more so now with what is uh, when we look around what China is doing. China is already uh, China and Russia have joined uh, forces, uh, which is uh, uh, you know uh, okay. I don't want to go into eschatology, but uh, they've they've joined in uh, forces to uh, wage war against Israel. So these are signs of coming time end times, right? So gospel. When we share the gospel, we need to mention things like heaven is real, hell is real. Right? Some people say there's no hell. No, no, no. Hell is real. Right? Uh, it was an interesting thing. Jesus, there was this one time somebody came up to me and said, why are you preaching about hell? Uh, right? Uh, and they said, you should only preach about the good things that Jesus did. Yes, we love to preach about all that, but there is a place there is a time to also preach about you know things about eternity why the lord jesus most of his preaching was about uh, you know hell and uh, things that are going to happen after life so remember that time is running out uh, let me give you this example this is a wonderful example that um, i read many years back um, david brainhard was a young man in the early uh, 1950s, sorry, 1700s, David Brainard. 
uh, a young man, uh, very brilliant man, right? Uh, and so uh, he was, he grew up as, uh, you know, a believer uh, and, uh, but he did not really, you know, was, he was not too deep in God's word and all of that. He was just, okay, I'm a Christian. Uh, and one day he went to uh, the church with his mother and the preacher's preaching, but he's dreaming and he's sleeping off. And uh, and this happened for many years. But one, one certain time he was forced by his parents. You, say, you have to come to church. So he goes and his mother says, I'm going to ask you what the preachers pre preached and you better tell me. Uh, and after that Sunday, as the he began to listen to the message and the preacher was preaching about the gospel and what happens uh, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And there was a fire burning inside him where that moment, that day, he he accepted the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. He told his mother, I'm going to go and preach the gospel to the people around. Um, he went on. Uh, to preach more than 30,000 sermons. He went into uh, the cold places. He went to uh, the tribal Americans and um, he was 27 years old. He, you know, he contracted tuberculosis. Every time he would cough, blood would come out of his mouth. And he did a wonderful, wonderful ministry. He passed away at the age of 27 or 28 of tuberculosis, but his mark in history still remains. I can go ahead and read it. David Brainard, The Life of David Brainard. This book, a young man named John Wesley read this book, The Life of David Brainard. And John Wesley went on to do a greater ministry than David Brainard himself. So what, what am I, why am I giving this example? He felt that time is running out. People need to be saved. And so the same way uh, we are to, you know, be passionate about souls. Uh, maybe some of us, we may not have that yet, but we can pray and ask God, God, give me the passion to win souls uh, for your kingdom. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Right? Uh, Romans 1.16, and we will close with this. Sorry, I've taken extra time. Yeah. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Amen. Thank you, brother. We, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now, Paul is writing this to a Roman church, a church that is always, you know, believed in idol worship. They looked at the sun, the stars. Uh, they believed they were all gods. They looked at the, uh, uh, you know, the rivers and they believed that, uh, you know, uh, God flows through it and all kinds of things. And Paul is writing to the Romans and they, I'm sure the Romans would have felt, what is this message about Jesus who came, he died? It doesn't make sense. But I'm sure Paul is right, you know, in his heart, he would have felt, I am not ashamed of the gospel. You may think it's foolish. You may think it is something that doesn't make sense. But here's the thing. It is the power of God unto salvation. So you and I can witness uh, this glorious, powerful Savior in our lives. Right? He's done it in our lives. We can go ahead and share it with the people around us. Amen. Amen. So, so we will pick up from next week. Uh, there's lots to learn how to share, what are the inhibitions, how do we overcome our fears, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so lots to learn, so you can look forward to that, right. Uh, let's just close before, let's pray before we close. Father, we want to thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for your word that is a life that is powerful, that is active, that is sharper than a two-edged sword, Lord. Lord, like what we read, you have commissioned us to share the gospel, to be a witness to the people around us. We just declare your power, your authority, your anointing upon each one of us, Lord. And as Paul writes to the Romans, he says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let this be our message as well, O oh God, that we will not be ashamed of the gospel, but we will declare aloud what you have done for us, Lord. Help us 
to be the witness that you have called us to be. Even as we go through uh, the session each week, Lord, I pray your grace, your anointing upon each of us, especially on the students, Lord, that you will empower them uh, to do what you have called them to do, God. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining. Let's catch up next week. Have a great week ahead. God bless you all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.